Gramsci slept with an open coffin in his bedroom until age 14, but his ideas have now almost put the final nail in the coffin of Western culture. Socialism, he said, is precisely the religion that must overwhelm Christianity. And whereas von Clausewitz said that war is politics continued by other means, Gramsci knew that politics is war by other means. He distinguished between a political war of position, comparable to trench warfare, and the war of movement, a sudden full frontal assault, resulting in complete social upheaval. The Russian Revolution of 1917 was a war of movement, made possible because the state was everything. Civil society was primordial and gelatinous. But Gramsci knew that this would not work in the West. In the West, he said, there was a proper relation between state and civil society. And when the state trembled, a sturdy structure of civil society was at once revealed. The state was only an outer ditch behind which there stood a powerful system of fortresses and earthworks. The war of position to be fought in these trenches, the structure of civil society, involved long-term struggle with strategic, smaller victories, slowly gaining territory. He identified churches, charities, the media, schools, universities, and economic corporate power centers as the targets for infiltration. This would later be termed the Long March through the institutions, and Gramsci said that an accurate reconnaissance of each individual country would be required. Whereas Marx stressed controlling the means of economic production, Gramsci, learning from the failures of Marxism, stressed the domain of cultural production. This is because he said consent from the great masses of the population to the general direction imposed on social life by the dominant fundamental group comes from the prestige the dominant group enjoys because of its position and function in the world of production. He used the term hegemony to describe this cultural, moral and ideological leadership. An effective political party, he said, had to lead these civil society alliances, but it also needed foot soldiers in state institutions, courts, police, councils, bureaucracies, to provide a foundation for the socialist state to run after the revolution. Using his methods, the necessary conditions for the revolution have already been incubated before it happens. What matters, he wrote, is making the movement a mass phenomenon with a concretely worldwide character capable of modifying popular thought. And that is why he stressed the importance of education, including the family. There, he said, children breathe in a whole quantity of notions and attitudes which facilitate the educational process. Education determines culture and culture determines politics. And so, according to him, this is how the hegemony of a directive center over the intellectuals asserts itself. First, a general conception of life offers to its adherents an intellectual dignity, providing a principle of differentiation from the old ideologies which dominated by coercion and an element of struggle against them. Second, a scholastic program unifies teachers, the most numerous and homogeneous group of intellectuals. In war, Gramsci wrote, it would sometimes happen that a fierce artillery attack seemed to have destroyed the enemy's entire defensive system, whereas in fact it had only destroyed the outer perimeter, and at the moment of their advance and attack, the assailants would find themselves confronted by a line of defence which was still effective. And he warned, the same thing happens in politics. Most advanced states, he said, where civil society has become a very complex structure, are resistant to the catastrophic incursions of the immediate economic element, crises, depressions, etc. The attackers can't mobilise fast enough 
and the crisis by itself doesn't give them fighting spirit. The defenders aren't demoralised, nor do they abandon their positions, even among the ruins, nor do they lose faith in their own strength or their own future. But, in contrast to the war of movement, the war of position dissolves society from the inside. Gramsci aimed at weaponizing a molecular social transformation taking place beneath the surface of society. In this way, he said, a society disintegrates at the base, and he believed that in politics, the war of position, once won, is decisive definitively, a warning to those who think woke is a pendulum that will swing back. It's actually been building momentum for nearly a hundred years now, and if you want to learn more about that process, check out my video on the Frankfurt School here. Thanks for watching.